Hello, and welcome to week four of my Music Map project. This week, I'm at home, uh, because why not? I will be looking over here because I have a second monitor. Uh, that's where my camera stuff is, just to make sure everything's going all right. And then my script is here, so yeah. Um, I'm going to start this week. Uh, this week is rock and roll week. And uh, for this week, my genre that I chose is skate punk and pop punk. Uh, I love this genre of music, have for a really long time now. I love pop punk, skate punk type music. And uh, I'll get into a little more of that later. But first, let's start with the Spotify playlist. This week's Spotify playlist is right there on the screen for you all to consume. Uh, it is the uh, Spotify, one of Spotify's pop punk playlists that they update occasionally. Has a, about a hundred songs on there. Majority of the songs I'll be talking about today will be on that Spotify playlist. So um, you can go listen to those. A couple won't be, but still, just a crap ton of good songs on there. And I really recommend uh, taking a look at that Spotify playlist. Um, so. First thing is the origins of skate punk and pop punk. Uh, both skate punk and pop punk already existed before the 90s, but were rather obscure subgenres at that time, especially pop punk. A second wave, or technically a revival of these genres, was accelerated by the success of grunge and the interest in rough guitar music by major record labels that came along with it. Pop punk and skate punk deliver the bursting, loud-mouthing energy of punk neatly tucked into a flashy jacket of pop, where the latter genre consists of independent artists strongly linked to skater or extreme urban sports subculture. The former is the product of a marketing hype towards skater teens with a strong lack of integrity in their lyrics, like 25-year-olds pretending to still be in high school. Both genres are strongly teen and adolescent oriented with lyrics that attempt to make sense in their daily lives. Pop punk bands were purely designed for this like a bad boy band. Topics of heartbreak, drugs, friendship, and anti-establishment, often in a rebellious way, are perfect for the recreationary teenager, but not too explicit to sell in large volumes. But skate punk and pop punk can go much deeper and become highly political, such as the reactionary Rock Against Bush movement. Both genres qualify as po punk rock revivals, albeit with metal and grunge influences. Pop punk and skate punk are punk because they are aggressive with mainly short and explosive songs. On the other hand, they are also pop with their melodic sing-along tunes or even anthems. I really love pop punk. I always have loved pop punk. It's something that I've been into for a really long time now. I got into pop punk in middle school um, through the My Chemical Romance train, actually, because... I started listening to My Chemical Romance because 21 Pilots did a cover of one of their songs, and I was a really big fan of 21 Pilots, still am a big fan of 21 Pilots in middle school, and that kind of led me down that path. Um, I could gush and gush about how the guitar and vocals in Pop and Skate Punk are, like, amazing, but I won't waste your time, and since I know I am going to have a lot to say about each song, let's just get right into it. So, the first song recommendation I have is American Idiot by Green Day. Now, if you haven't heard this song, What Is Wrong With You, um, you have been living under a rock for years and years and years. Um, American Idiot is such a good song. Um, uh, things that I like about this song are the beginning bang of the song, like how it, how it kind of just shoots off like a rocket. It has the, uh guitar riff right away and then just shoots off with drums and it starts kind of the first verse with a push pull of this guitar riff and vocals so the guitar riff comes in and then it pushes it to vocals and drums and then it pushes it back to the guitar riff and then they come together for the pre-chorus and the chorus but i really like that push pull of the guitar and the vocals during verses uh the politicality and controversy of the song is a big thing uh, for this whole Green Day album, uh, American Idiot is the title track of the album American Idiot, um, and it this album was a very, very popular Green Day album, but it did spark some controversy because, you know, I mean, I'm not going to get too much into it, but you can guess why a band called Green Day making an album called American Idiot would cause some controversy uh, in the political world. Uh, I love the guitar solo in this song, and the drums are just amazing, and at 2.18 uh, in this song there is a cut 
uh, where it's just the vocals and then the drums come back in and guitars come back in full swing and I just absolutely love that. Uh, the second song I have on my list is Misery Business by Paramore. This is uh, one of uh, my favorite songs on this list because it has female vocals. With pop punk songs and skate punk songs, you usually don't get a lot of female vocals, but songs, pop punk songs with female vocals are just really enjoyable to me. I really love the grunge that some female vocals can have uh, in their voice, but then also like the clarity of uh, her vocals in this song are so good, uh, especially on the chorus and the runs. Her vocals are just perfectly mixed and sound so good on this song. Uh, the start of the song is very similar to the Green Day song where it has like the riff of the song and then it kits off, kicks off, but it's a little more experimental by using like a recording of a record playing the like a weird ballad-esque version of the chorus of the song and then it kicks in, which I think is super unique and uh, definitely experimental uh, for pop punk genre songs. Uh, but I really like that. The drums really, really push this song, which I really like about it. The drums are super static, super fast, and they push the song uh, very nicely. Uh, the end of the chorus, uh, the jank, 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 and the guitars with the drum hits along with it. I just really, really like that section of the song. I think it's great. And the calm down at the end of the second chorus that builds back up with the drums and then it kicks into the bridge with the crazy instrumental solo which I absolutely love and then the cut out uh, with the guitar after the instrumental solo it's another one where it's just vocals and drums and the guitar comes kicking back in for the end of the song great great song uh, I love it uh, third song I have is I'm not okay I promise by my chemical romance uh, these are some Huge vocals from uh, the lead singer Gerard Way here. He is an amazing vocalist, but these are some crazy good vocals for him. And you can tell how this song and this album that this song was on really led into the Black Parade. Um, I won't get too much into that, but it it's uh, MCR's one of their first like hit songs, uh, which I think is super cool. And it is uh, one of the singles off this album. Uh, so it has better mixing than a lot of the other songs on the album, which is why I picked this over other songs, just because the mixing is better, and it sounds good, and it's one of their most popular songs. Uh, the syncopation of, like, the guitar and the drums during the verses and how they don't, like, perfectly fit together is something in this song that I really, really love. I think it's super cool, and then they kind of merge together for the chorus. Uh, the, ba the backing vocals sound so, so good, and it just has incredible mixing on the harmonies. Uh, the screaming vocals and the raspiness to Gerard's voice in this song really help push the message of the lyrics because he's singing about how he's not okay. So if you're just singing, but I'm not okay, it, it doesn't sound like you're serious, but the raspiness and the urge in his voice seems like he's not kidding. Uh, and the breakdown and guitar solo, I just wrote, oh yes, please more on my Google Doc because I love it. I want more of it. I love it. Um, and then it gets down into the, the whispered vulnerable vocals with just piano, just vocals, and then it BOOM kicked off screamo vocals, and then it has spoken screaming in the last voice, which I love, uh, the spoken screaming line of, I'm not okay, I'm really not okay, and then in the background you just hear him go, TRUST ME, and I, I think that's a really, really, like, cool part of the song, I don't know, uh, but... I really like that part of the song, and this is one of my favorite songs on the list. I love My Chem, and they're just a great band. Uh, and there are tons of their songs on the playlist, so definitely go listen to the more of them. Uh, the next song I have is Thanks for the Memories, but with no vowels, uh, by Fall Out Boy. Uh, the orchestral arrangement is so cool on this song. Like, the way they use the cellos and the bells and stuff on this song instead of your regular guitar like pop punk guitar to start the song i think is really cool and then you get into the grungy guitar that fits super well with the vocals on this song the vocals on this song are doubled so it has that low end singing in his baritone range but also belting in the tenor range and it it's mixed really well so they fit together really nicely and sound super good uh, the harmonies on the end of the chorus, again, I will always love when you put harmonies in a song, they sound so good, and there's a part of the song where the backing harmony vocals go, One night stand, ah, 
And it's so weird and like doesn't seem like it would fit, but somehow it fits so well. And then it cuts into an acoustic guitar section. And I just wrote acoustic guitar question mark. What? Four more question marks. But I absolutely love this section. It's so cool that you can switch from orchestra cellos to grungy guitar to acoustic guitar. I I think that's just one of the cool coolest tropes of this song. Uh, the drum breakdown uh, in this song, again, where it's just vocals and drums and the guitar cuts out. I really like song when songs do that. I mean, it's, it's a pop punk trope type thing, but I think it's super cool. And then the ad-lib vocals that the lead singer does on top at, during the last chorus, I think are just great. Um, the next song I have is called Dear Maria, Count Me In by All Time Low. The beginning of this song sounds like it's a live performance because you hear uh, the lead singer go <clears throat> into the microphone before the song starts, um, which I think is a cool little thing. Uh, there is less grunge in the guitar, uh, but it works very well with the vocals. It's not like super low guitar, but I think it works very well with this lead singer in his uh, vocal reign. Uh, the guitar works very well with him. And then uh, on the word place, he sings place, and I, I love that so much. And then the halftime at the end of the chorus is so cool and then again when all of the drums all of the guitar cuts out and it goes i see your name in light and it kicks back in but the i see your name in lights has nothing under it under it i love that part i think it fits perfectly uh, the harmonies again on this song are just great uh and then there the clapping bridge with filtered vocals so there's claps in the drum line and then filtered vocals to start but it builds back up into the chorus, which I think is super cool. And then the last chorus, when he goes, I'm coming with you. I really like that change in the, in the just vocal delivery of that line. I, I think it adds just so much to the line. It's super, super cool, super fun. The ending of the song is really wacky, uh, but I kind of love it, uh, how the slowdown happens at the end of the song. And like it feels like you're in a time warp. I, I just think that's super cool. Uh, the next song I have is The Ballad of Mona Lisa by Panic at the Disco. Um, Panic at the Disco usually writes more pop songs, but this is definitely one of their older, punkier songs that I really like. Um, this song starts with Bells, which I think is a super interesting choice. Um, but this is one Panic at the Disco song where Brendan Urie's vocals are really, really well mixed, and it doesn't sound like he's straining for those high notes, which in a lot of Panic at the Disco songs, especially their newer stuff, like on their newest album, Viva Las Vengeance, you can hear a lot of strain in Brendan's voice as he gets older, but like on this song, the vocals are just great. I usually just can't stand his vocals, uh, but on some of these like middle albums between the, uh, the new one and some of the older ones, I think his vocals are just really good and the albums are mixed really nicely i really like when he slide when he does a vocal slide on the words right and believe i really i really like how he does that um the left and right channel usage in this song is super cool um a lot of songs don't do this anymore because they want to be able to be played off on, on a speaker or in your car and sound just the same as you would hear them on like an industry speaker or good headphones but uh when songs use this left and right channel uh manipulation i think it's super cool if you don't overuse it because it can get to a point where it's like gimmicky but if you use it in the right way it it has that really cool twist to it and i absolutely love how it's used in this song it's used perfectly um i have a timestamp 140 in the song there's a scream in the background that you can barely barely here but it's there and i think that's just a really cool trope to this song um there uh, during the bridge uh he has filtered vocals which i really like and then at uh 241 in this song is my favorite favorite part of this song it goes acapella the backing vocals go uh uh uh, uh as he sings over it and i just think it's so so cool I love it so much and then that big hell uh held note that big high held note near the end is just great and the song ends with bells so it loops back around to the beginning which i think is really cool the final song i have is uh one that you probably haven't heard of before 
uh, uh, or if you're an anime fan, you probably have heard of before. It is called Kickback by Kenshi Yonezu. I hope I said that right. Um, but this song is the anime intro for the anime called Chainsaw Man. Uh, but it is a full, like, 240, uh, 2 minute 40 second pop punk song. I really love this song. Uh, it is the anime intro for Chainsaw Man, but it doesn't feel gimmicky like an anime intro. It feels like it can stand on its own as a song. Uh, one of the coolest things about this song, I think, is right away at the beginning you hear a chainsaw rev, which is just super fucking metal, and I love it so much. Um, the Japanese vocals are so good in this song, like, and I like how in the song the, uh, Japanese and English vocals are mixed together. And, um, sometimes the English, the English vocals, I think he sings a beautiful star, but he sings Japanese before it. I think they mix really well. You can even tell that it's two different languages, which, I mean, I mean, you can tell, but you know what I mean. They, they blend super well. The vocalist just has an incredible voice on this song. I also love the little static drum pattern on this song, the little, I think it's so freaking amazing and it just so like the speed of it like goes super well with the bass of this song uh the vocals and like the orchestration with the strings during the bridge are just amazing uh the vocals does sound like he's straining a little bit here but i think that adds to like the melancholy like he's reaching for something um uh the and then there is a lady screaming like like she's getting killed that brings it back into the pre-chorus, which I think is super cool. But this time in the pre-chorus, it does kind of the same thing the all-time low th song does with the clapping, except it replaces the drums with the clapping, and then it has like a guitar back up into the full instrumental, which I just think is really, really cool. Um, there is a really weird guitar thing that happens a couple times in this song. I think the first time it happens is at like around 58, 59 seconds in the song where it's like a guitar echo. I don't really know how to explain it or can't emulate it with my voice. So just go listen to the song. I think that is a really cool part of the song. And then the like maniacal laugh at the end, I think is so cool. And I just wrote, oh my God, I love this song so much. Uh, yeah, uh, so those are all of my song recommendations for uh, skate punk and pop punk. I love skate punk, pop punk. I got into it when I was in middle school and I have always been into it. And just some of the other songs on the playlist uh, that I just absolutely love are um, uh, just, there are so many songs on the playlist. Uh, I'm going to pull it up here just and recommend a couple that I didn't like get to talk about in extension in this video. Uh, obviously, all the other Green Day My Chem stuff in here. Um, uh, one of the first songs on the playlist, What's My Age Again by Blink-182 is really good. Still Waiting by Sum 41 is really, really good. I like Scotty Doesn't Know by Lustra and Crazy by Make Out. Those are both really good songs. And yeah, um, of course, like I, I Write Sins Not Tragedies by Panic at the Disco as well. Those are all super good songs on the playlist. So go check that out. Uh, here is the playlist on the screen again. That will also be down in the description with all of the songs that I talked about today that are playing in the video as well. Uh, so thanks, and I will see you next week. Bye.